Beat here five versus I Fly Go Blue. Who will win? Anna Mario Cohen, copyright 1967. Um, this is the golden boy of basically all Bluetooth receiving devices. Like I, the, the X Duo, this this thing. Well, this is the basic, but like this monstrous thing with the Bluetooth adapter, the balanced version of this, a great. And then there, there's like the, the Ear Studios 100 came along. It has that amazing app. You can do all sorts of corrections, DSPs. And then there's like Hibby stuff. And then there's there's a couple other dotted around. But this is new. And it waited long enough to try to compete with this. And this has always been the one I said go to. Go to it. What, what, do, you, what do you need? What do you, uh, I want to take my headphones out. BTR5. I have a laptop. I travel a lot and I want to have, you know, I want to plug something into my laptop and have good sound. BTR5. It was the golden boy. It still kind of is. The only problem is not the fact that this exists, but the fact that if I go and look on Amazon, currently the BTR5 is $200, which is like $70 more than it used to be, maybe $90 more than it used to be. And I know that there's a new... BTR5 coming out. However, I've looked at it. It doesn't change in the build, and they talk about MQA. And fuck that. So, I mean, maybe they changed over the DAC. I, I didn't do enough research until I have it in hand. I don't care. But what I do care about is that IFI, or actually Linsol, sent me this IFI Go Blue because it's their entry level into this. They've had the hip DAC, like the one you had to put in the back and plug in. But I, and also IFI had that one, the XD, XDSD that was like the Bluetooth box. It was like this sort of size, like a little bit shorter than this. And that was their thing. But really, this is what the people want. And I currently have it tethered to my phone because you can plug it in just like the BTR5. You can plug this in directly to a laptop with a USB to USB-C or USB-C to USB-C to go like this. And I did this to test to see how much damage going Bluetooth to this was was incurring. And as far as my ears can tell, and people say I have shit ears, but as far as my shit ears can tell, I can't. So I'm just gonna unplug the, the this. This is, doesn't need to be plugged in. You can take this wire and just put it in a pile. And then this is still on. Let's turn on Bluetooth. And how long is it gonna take for it to pair? Actually, since I have it on and running, it may require a bit of like coaxing. Usually it's like that, it's just, it's connected. Paired, active 100%, connected for phone calls and media. Let's plug in a headphone, some random shitty headphone you take out to the fucking supermarket. And we'll uh, throw these on my head. And we're gonna double tap this. Do you remember we talking about the Bose? Remember the Bose fucking um, QC45? The headphones I love, 300 something dollars, 330 dollars. And they were great and they had manual buttons, but the voice they had was absolute hot garbage, like 1990s computer voice. Take a fucking listen to what IFI has put into their little tiny $200 thing. Aptex Adaptive. I came, did you come? That's a sex worker. That is a virtual stripper. And I know, because I have that game, VR Paradise, where there are virtual strippers. Um, and that's, that's good. You've done, you've done well, IFI. I didn't, I didn't know I would be attracted to the voice out of a device, but just for that, this. The BTR5 is just beeps and boops. It doesn't try to speak to you, which is probably to the benefit of most things, unless you can now, now you've got this, this sultry Cortana going on. That's the new bar. It's way up there. It's so fucking high that you, you, you're you not gonna be able to beat it. Um, All right, so that's a four thousand dollars set of planars. That's not very easy to drive, but not super hard to drive. But I just think they'll do get destroyed by the fucking eye if I go blue. I'm going to give you the direct comparison now. All right, ready, Zeos, timestamp. Future Zeos, timestamp. This point. B 
BTR5 versus IFI Blue. I'm not going to include the Ear Studio. That's for people who want to do the, the tweaks and they have the, they're used to it. That, that's yours. Um, if you want to, that has actually of the three, if I'm going to imaginarily talk about the Ear Studio, because I don't, I have one somewhere. Um, that has the worst controls. I hate the little double rockers and you can't tell if it's the top on this one or the bottom of it. So I hate the controls on that. Build is fine, two and a half millimeter, three and a half millimeter built-in clip. BTR5 was my golden girl. Not not like the golden girls. Although I know I haven't watched that show. That show was on TV when I was like very small. I remember it being like the show for adults. I wonder if I'd laugh at it now. I think that's when you know you've gotten old is when you start laughing at the golden girls. Like I bought, it had a clip that was a clear clip box and it's got like a leather case because everyone had a BTR5 so of course DD Hi-Fi, I mentioned DD Hi-Fi a couple times um, in this review so Zia is just like DD Hi-Fi store or their Amazon store so it's got a nice a nice little leather case from DD Hi-Fi 2.5 millimeter, 3.5 millimeter so balanced output, regular uh, standard 3.5 millimeter output USB-C here, the control schematics was all buttons, all button based, you had a rocker for volume and the next track, last track you had a button for play, pause, and answer phone calls and everything else. And then you had another button for turn on, turn off, and menu. And this was also pairing the other, the play, pause button. And that that's fine, because it sat in your pocket. If you, if you left it out of the case and you could feel it just fine, you could raise the volume, lower the volume. You had to tap the volume up and tap the volume down, because if you hold it, it doesn't go down fast. It changes tracks. So that takes a little bit of like getting used to it. If someone borrows this from you, and they're like, how do you do this? Oh, volume down. Okay, it changed tracks. Why? Because you held it down. Tap, 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 tap. The IFI, oh, this also has an OLED screen because why doesn't everything have an OLED screen? Which is nice because it tells me the battery and it tells me it's LDAC. Whereas this one is not an LDAC. You can force it an LDAC on your phone, but it has so many different varieties of what it can handle. So it's got Aptex, Aptex HD, Aptex Low Latency, Aptex Adaptive, which is what it's currently on. Then it has LDAC, then it has HWA slash LHDC, then AAC and SBC. And I could force different codecs on my phone itself, but I put an LDAC and it did reduce the range a bit. And I think Aptex Adaptive might be on par. Like I have to look up the specs because I'm not hearing, I literally had it plugged in via a data cable and an aptex adaptive i can't tell a difference i mean that's similar to ldac i'm not going to say one better than the other but this doesn't do aptex adaptive this is uh, bluetooth 5.5.1 uh, and this is 5.0 i'm not sure what the new btr5 is going to do probably 5.1 maybe it'll have aptex adaptive i know it's got mqa because that's what they're talking about and fuck um control scheme on this one button on the side. This button is power, and then double tap to have the sexy lady tell you Aptex Adaptive or LDAC. Aptex Adaptive. <sighs> this is why I'm an Emma Watson fan. I think it's the, it's, it's the accent. Um, the bottom is several things. USB-C charge port, power indicator. Then you've got a microphone input for when you're speaking, and then you've got a reset button in case something freaks out and you gotta hold it down for three seconds. So that's just the only button here, and you really don't need to use it, which is fine. You've got nothing to do down here except for look that it's on and charge it. Then you come to this side where you have another button and a wheel and a button inside the wheel. By the way, it has an IFI logo there. The top is instead of a two and a half and a three and a half, it's a 4.4 and a three and a half. So a normal headphone jack for KPH30Is or if you want to plug in your Grado Hemp's or whatever. And then a 4.4, which this is my preferred connector for all things balanced because it's not as bulky as a fucking giant four pin XLR and it's not as fragile as this little thing. Like there's the comparison sake. In fact, this is a DD Hi-Fi adapter to go 4.4 to two and a half, so I could test things in this without swapping wires, etc. cetera. Um, but you could see the difference in size. Now, this has been popular for years because it's small. Good night. Why are you shutting down? Because I paused you? I didn't, well, all right, let it sleep. I'm not using the BTR5 for the rest of the review anyway. Um, so I prefer this. The problem was getting something that's much, much larger than three and a half to go into a little portable device. And IFI has done that. I think, however, 
at the cost of possible build quality. Because if I, although if I plug into this, here, listen to this. Perfectly smooth, I know this thing works fine. Great. If I plug into the IFI, it kind of sounds like I'm plugging it into crunchy cereal. Like, I'm sure it's gonna be fine. It's just, I've not encountered many, many very small form factor 4.4s. And it sounds kind of weird. Not cheap, it doesn't wiggle. It just like, it makes aggressive sounds as you plug it in. So, but it, it fucking locks the, it, it's in there though. I'll tell you that much. This is this is how you test, by the way. Whee! Um, welcome to Zero Views, everyone. Thank you for subscribing, if you haven't, or supported on Patreon in case I throw it into my monitor and I have to find that exact same NEC EA 294 WMI monitor, which I spent my own money before I was making any money on the internet on that, and that fucker thing was $700, because the bezel is the same. That's why you spend the money, and that was a color accurate display. Anyway, back to the thing. So you got your two outputs, and then you have the side. This button is your pairing button for Bluetooth. You hold it down to pair, or you quick press it, and this light turns yellow, teal, and white and off. And whereas the BTR5 has an EQ that you can get into the, the FIO app and you could set up jazz or vocal or user, the IFI is much more simple. You have X base, which is yellow. You have X space, which is teal. And you have white, which is both of those. So you have a spacey base or basey space. I don't know, whichever one you want or off. That's it. Y if you know anything about, uh, this is your first video for me, which is probably some of you is this first video, um, you need to know something. IFI puts a button on a thing and it says uh, bass. And you know, things have had bass boosts before, but if you've never heard an IFI bass boost that you haven't lived or you haven't done some sort of weird psychedelic drugs because somehow it makes the low end more, but it also makes it better. Like, I've never turned on X space and been like, oh, oh, this is disgusting. This is the worst thing ever. I mean, even this is their $2,200 IFI ICANN signature. And it's X space has fucking three levels. And you just turn it and it's all analog. It's always analog. That's the thing. I don't know if this is analog. This might be the digital version. But when it's an analog, it's like, wow, how do you do that? So here are the Meze Imperial Elites. And they definitely don't need bass boost. And I was listening to these, which arrived yesterday with this, because this was the second thing I plugged it into. I like this unit so much. Literally, the first thing was this IFI, which was like hooked up to a $3,000 jack into this. And I'm like, all right, what's the next thing I'll hook it up to? A uh, $200 little portable Bluetooth thing. And it fucking works perfectly. It's like, I can kind of tell the difference between this stack and this thing floating here in midair. But 90% of the time I'd use this because it's in my pocket and I can I literally walked around with it. Um, God damn it, get back to the, this is the most abstracted I've ever been. Abstracted? Oh fuck, I'm a Jackson Pollock painting now. It actually lists here, pairing X base and X space is written there as the instructions for what this does. The back of the unit has a little QR code. It says go blue on black on black. Lettering is always my favorite IFI, you're great at this. There's a high wide res wireless sticker. There's nothing labeling what this button does. So if you get how to turn it on, it's the button that isn't labeled to turn it on. It's just the button that's not labeled pairing or X space, X space. Now, if I adjust the knob, you see it adjusts the volume on, my, on said phone there, which is different than the clicking rocker because that's dedicated. It's always, always volume. And it's a nice clicky volume. Um, you might catch it by accident, but even if you catch it in your pocket and you roll it, like you accidentally give it like a jam, it doesn't shoot like all the way up because it's a digital thing. So it lags slightly, but in this case, lag is good because on a regular amplifier like this or this, when you turn that knob from there to there, it, you now went from zero to 40%. And if you accidentally like reached across it and you spun the whole thing and went all the way to the end, that's a hundred. But with this, if you accidentally click the volume, it goes to plus 10, plus 20, maybe. Because you have to give it like a deliberate turn for a while to get it to go up. So that's actually a saving grace. The center of the knob is your play, pause, next track, last track. And it works 
like you'd expect. Like X-Duo needs to put on their fucking portable devices, X-Duo, where it's press once. Oh God, that was too loud. It was, that was very loud. Probably shouldn't be doing this with the Imperians. Fuck it. Um, I forgot where they were. Keep in mind, that is a big expensive planar and this is a little tiny little unit and it just went, I just shit my pants because that was loud. So one press plays and pauses, plays and pauses. Um, two presses, next track. You know what, this isn't blowing up the headphones fast enough. One, two, three. Last track. That's it. I think you long hold to get the, um, how's San Francisco doing? No, it just opened the results. I thought I was going to say something about San Francisco. Because that just, that's your assistant. Switch back. We don't care how San Francisco is doing. There's poop. Probably lots of poop. Anyone from San Francisco? How's the poop? Is there like a weather? Is there like a map that says poop? I think there was. I think I know that. That there's like a public fecal matter map that you can load on your phone, which I would absolutely install if you live in San Francisco. So as far as controls go, I've only had this for probably two weeks now, which is not forever, but I already like it more than the BTR5. I reach in my pocket, there's a giant knob, always a giant knob. I know if I put my thumb on it, that's the controls. I need to pause it, I need to talk to somebody. I hate the song, double click, next song comes on. Lower it, raise it, it's just, it's perfect. It's fucking perfect. And then I hit the bass boost. Put on just the bass boost, just that. And I mean, yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Now let's hit it again. X space, these don't need space. And that's both, they kind of like both. All right, pause this for a second. It's simplified beyond the BTR5. BTR5 has a screen, it has a menu, it has high and low gain. The BTR5 has EQs you can load. The BTR5 has car mode you can enable. The BTR5 has choices between USB 1.0 and USB 2.0. The BTR5 is a feature juggernaut. Almost as big a feature juggernaut as the Ear Studio. What IFI have done is said, you know what? Fuck it. Strip all that shit away. Bluetooth connect. Give us a sexy lady. Aptex adaptive. Um, give us a knob. Put on our special bass boost. Put on our X space. X space basically makes sound go from like here to like here. Like it just widens everything, which if a headphone doesn't need it, you don't need to put it on. Let me take these off actually, as much as I don't want to. But I whipped out the B&O H6, which is an old school, like amazing portable. I think these were, these, these were cheap at some point. They were like 150 bucks. This one's specifically a color that you can't get anymore. They had like a thousand color combinations. And like I put them on and then you hit play and like, do these need a bass boost? Oh yeah. The, oh, another X space. Let's do a space. These these are always slightly narrower sounding. So having that space, it's like a whole new headphone. Like something like this, you kind of don't want to mess with it. Like that's obviously that's that's it. You got the Mezze Elite. You don't fuck touch with it. But a more fun headphone or a headphone that's closed back. That's like a little bit tighter. Feel free to X, base, X, space, or both. Where's both? Give me both. Both with an F. Yeah. These are, now that's how I'd run these. Who am I the greatest from the uh, Carol on Tuesday soundtrack? It's my sweet lord from Guardians. Just, I think... I think raw sound quality, raw, like straight, no EQ, no bass boost, I still have a hard time picking the two apart. I think this has more power slightly, it's about a quarter of a watt out of the balanced, because you know, balanced will always have more power. 
But when you factor in the control schematics of this, the ease of use, the sexy lady voice, which is just, I don't know, sh leave me alone. I th and the fact, here's the, here's the other thing. If that was 110 and this was 200, this would be a much harder decision because this is this, I like this one more, but it's more expensive. But now this is $200. So if you already have a BTR5, I don't think you're going to gain anything by going to the IFI Go Blue. Not much. You gain the 4.4 Pentacon, which might be enough. God knows it's enough for fucking me because I've had to run with, you know, here's how my freaking, excuse me. Here's how my BTR5 has looked for the last, you know, six months since I got this adapter. Because I run everything 4.4. I don't have 2.5 shit for anything. Why, why would I have that? 2.5 is dead. Fio, get get over it. Um, so I've been running like this sort of build. This is my loadout right now. And it's like, okay, this is cool. This is cool. But then it's in the in the case and I'm like trying to feel, because there's indentations when I'm trying to feel where is that volume. It, it, and then you're, you're pressing it. This has just got such a better user interface. It's slightly shorter, like a good solid half inch to... 2.3 centimeters. No, it's probably not 2.3 centimeters. That's an inch. It's one. It's 14 millimeters. I'm going 14 millimeters. That's a complete guess, but you know, this is how I'm an American. 14 millimeters shorter, and it's about the same thickness. And they brag about how the casing is plastic, but like a rubberized plastic, which is probably going to melt in about 10 years. Everyone who's got the rubberized plastic knows it melts, which that doesn't. But that is a metal case and glass, which is would appear nicer. But the Bluetooth connectivity is like you need to have plastic. That's what makes Bluetooth work. What's the flaws of this other than a slightly higher noise floor, which if you're going to go sensitive IM, keep it 3.5 millimeter. And as long as my particular phone isn't above like 70 or 80 percent. There's almost no noise floor, and then there's a noise floor above 70%, and you can just hear it. But then again, you only hear it when it's when you're playing nothing. If you go balanced, then there's a noise floor through the entire range, then it's even higher at 70 or 80%. Which, those Dunu's ends, I was so fucking scared, because I know those will explode in my ears if I accidentally unpause the music. But yeah, no. This thing is probably the next... This is the benchmark now. They're they're both, let's say they're both equal with sound. Just purely equal. Like I can't hear the difference, tell them apart. You put the bass boost on this, then I fucking know which one it is. But let's just say for a, a argument's sake that they sound identical. I'd still take the IFI over the BTR5. It's just nicer to it's just nicer. It's nicer to deal with. It's nicer to touch. If you need to do car mode. I, I don't know if this will do car mode. I don't think it will. There's no app for it. It just is. There isn't an app for this, is there? No. No. I read the whole thing and there's no app, which is kind of good because knowing IFI, the app would be absolute hot garbage. They do wonderful build stuff, but then you get into the software and it's like, Ooh. much praise to this. Links to it on Lensol. Still praise to this. Like, this hasn't like, oh, it's this is garbage now. I can't. I love the BTR5 too much. It's it's going to take me weeks to get into my head that there's another product that is as good, if not better in certain aspects than this. Just when everyone asks me to recommend something, I'd be like, BTR5. Or, or IFI Go Blue. It's going gonna, it's gonna to ha have to come out of my... I'm going to have to hammer that into the fucking recommendation. Because it does everything I want a very basic, powerful Bluetooth machine to do. Like I have the X-Duo X-Duo 5 balanced. It's a brick. It's it's like this size, the Shanling M8, by the way. It's, this, is, I, this is great. If you want a portable music player, here you go. This fucking thing is fantastic. This is like $1,600. And it's a brick, like, I don't go shop if I go shopping and I have my phone on me, which is already a giant new Xperia, by the way. It's giant. Like I don't want this also. My pants just fall down. 
Then I gotta pick up my suspenders again, because I have this fucking thing, and then this fucking thing, and then all the... So this is lovely. The fact that it doesn't come with a clip might bother some of you. Um, the accessories for it here, you wanna see accessories? You get bag. And you get a little short wire. That's it. IFI is not spending any money on weird accessories. They're not spending money on a clip system. They're, not, they're just giving you a little bag. So it looks like a little a little leprechaun fucking can carry this around. I guess you could put it in there and then clip this to like your keychain, but then you can't access the controls, so that's useless. I'm hoping like DD Hi-Fi makes a case for this or something with a clip or something with a loop. But the loop would be nice. Like this is, I like this thing because you could actually just put your key ring on that. And then, or I'd get the BTR 3K for that, which also has a DD Hi-Fi case, but no loop. Because that'd be great. Just carry on my keys. It's the keychain size. Keychain size DAC amp, Bluetooth DAC amp, peach keychain size. I just, this needs something. Now that I'm actually sitting here talking about it, this needs either a clip system or a loop ring where I could just put something through it just to get it. Because right now it just it just it's just doing this thing, which can be fine. You drop it in your pocket, it can be fine. I just think some people are gonna be like, hey. Hey, 3D printers. I have a 3D printer and I have a friend who can design shit. Get your caliper out, measure this. It wouldn't be hard to build something that this just slides into. Since really you only need to access for like everyday usage the volume knob and the button to make the button go. If you have to hit this button, you can have like a little part of the 3D print that's like soft and flexible that just bends in. Yeah, I would, I would leave. I'm going to leave both. In fact, I'm going to use these. I'm going to leave that on. Very little I would change. Very little I would change with this at all. In fact, other than, other than lacking a clip and some noise floor issues, which I find... Here's another thing I find. Since I have these uh, IEMs th th that are basically the stethoscope of the audio world, I find a lot of the amplifiers that I really enjoy, the ones that are like warm and fun and like, like the fucking Solaris or the Rebel Amp, they tend to have some noise floor. There's just something about it. It's more of an alive amplifier. It's just leak. That's me defending noise floor. That, that's a fucking hot take. Like, oh, I really want my amplifier to be noisy. It's just something I've noticed. There are some amplifiers that are just clean as a, A90's clean, Singer's clean, but like the Burson, Burson's got a little bit of a noise floor. And I fucking love the way the Burson sounds. So it's just, if you're one of those people who can't stand a little bit of like, like, like when vinyl is spinning on nothingness, but way quieter than that, then this is not the unit for you. But I mean, literally any headphone, non-super stupendously sensitive I am, you'll never notice that. In fact, if you have any music playing, even quietly, you'll never notice that. Anyway, I'm done. This sci-fi is fantastic. And I, I, I'm so glad they finally got their size right. And I'm so glad there's a portable with a 4.4 that I actually can like just straight recommend without any hesitation. A wallpaper. Everyone was behind, and now IFI is in front. Or IFI was behind, IFI was behind. Wallpaper, available in the description. Links to this on uh, Linsol. Thank you, Linsol, for sending it out. IFI does send me things, but Linsol beat them to this particular one. Um, links to the BTR5. Maybe the new one? I don't know. That one for $200 is weirding me out, because that is legitimately 70% more than it was when I bought it. So don't know, I have a clue what the hell's going on. We'll see what happens in the coming months. If the new one comes, I know the new one doesn't have 4.4. It just has MQA, which is like, why? Why? Look look up MQA if you wanna know what's wrong with it. Um, yeah, links to this, links to, links to these headphones. Obviously you have to link to these. Everyone just witnessed these get exploded on my channel. So Audio 46, go buy them. Um, yeah, that's it, I'm done. Patreon and subscribe star. See reviews early. Uh, participate in yard sales. Right now, um, nothing. Like I'm not going to sell the BTR5. That son of a bitch. It's got too much sentimental value to even think about selling it. But other private projects and items that people have sent me in the past, maybe even this basic, would probably end up in the yard sale at some point because I have the plus 
version and the balanced version. So the basic, which is this, the balance. So maybe one of those end up in the yard sale. First to the 10th of every month, and I ship half shipping international and free shipping content in the United States. And then, so you get to see reviews early, yard sale, get to sound demos that have been, you can get to the modern sound demos uncompressed and lossless. And all the old sound demos have the audio uploaded so that if you're missing one of the old ones, like, hey, Zeos, where's your DT1990 sound demo that just been missing forever? Because lawyers, well, lawyers can't touch my private personal stash, which is um, on Telegram. So you want to join that. Uh, that's in the $5 tier. And then there's a $10 tier, which is the behind the scenes private Telegram chat. So if you jump up to $10, you climb the little paywall. And you get there with, uh, I think it's 185 people in there now, which you could ask any of them or me questions directly at Zio Spentera in the chat. I'll answer them. And then uh, you get into a private swap meet channel as well when you join that chat. And you get in that for life. The $10 chat, you got to maintain patronage. But uh, if you get into the swap meet channel, you want to sell things or to buy things, that's a lifetime join. Mostly because I'm too lazy to kick people out who have not been. Plus, if you put something for sale listed there and then you get kicked out, it's like, what the hell's the point? Anyway, I'm done. Thank you for stopping by. Again, wallpaper. Again, links. Again, thanks. Again, Hi-Fi Guides in the Hi-Fi Guides forum. Merch. If you can just merch somewhere. If you're on the mobile app, I think you see the merch. I don't know how, the, if you're on, like, your computer, there's there's no link. There's a There might be a link in the description. I don't remember if I have a Teespring link. Is it Teespring? I think it's Teespring. I don't know. They're weird. Tell me if merch is working. Anyway, I'm done. I'm going to pack this into my pocket. Probably on these again. Because. And I'm, I'm going to go do. I'm going to go do my thing. Anyway, I'll see you in two days for another review. Don't forget to check out the unboxing channel and the, the sound on my channel and all